Jake. Alright. Alright, so um, I'm going to do something that I haven't done, and that's try to play a tune that has not been played out yet. So I am in the process of learning my new tunes, and we're playing on Shiprocked. At the end of the month, it's cold here. I'm making excuses before I even play. I don't know this song, but we're going to try to do it anyways. I only played it a time or two live, and that was over in Europe. And it's got a lot of parts in it, so I wanted to just try to get through it. Let's see if we can do it, and I hope the audio is a decent mix for you guys. <sighs> uh, one more time, let's get a little less. Yeah.
Bros. Something like that. It's kind of close. There's still some warts in there. But in general, um, that's something like how it should go. Make sure I'm not getting text. And um, we're off to the races here. That's on the new album. And it's called Copperhead. He says, it's got pavilion with my kind of grease. Oh, man. Hey, I like that. I'm a huge, um, huge Eric Johnson fan. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's kind of interesting to, uh, we got a snow day here. Let me pull some of that delay out so you can kind of hear the riff. When I'm practicing, uh, you know, it's like I want to be able to balance some, some improvisation and some worked out things. Obviously, that tune has a ton of sections. So what I'm trying to get through is just make sure that I've got the form right. Make sure that I've got some, uh, you know, some some licks in there that are that are in there, you know. But yeah, there's a uh, there's you know, it's 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 like it's it's always tough, right? When you're trying to to practice because you want to work on chops, you want to work on the songs that you need to work on. Um, repetition is key, and uh, for me, you know, that riff uh, is always really fun to play. I'm going to give it to you like So it's got this kind of like Billy Gibbonsy uh almost Texasy kind of vibe to it. Uh and then what makes it really fun to me is the whole thing moves up in a minor third. So we go from A to C minor. got that kind of sound you know almost like a f7 over c so um the tune moves in minor thirds like that and i use the f chord as the transition so in a that's a flat six and in c that's a four So um, the bridge comes after the second time with you. And then into a bridge that's got kind of this real pretty kind of sparkly clean tone. That stays clean, but when I'm playing it live, that's usually where I switch over to the full. And there's moments in the solo that I think are written, but there's also moments in the solo where it's not written. Like I like to come into the solo the same way. Or sorry. Yeah, so it's got that kind of. I feel like those are like main melodies that need to be acknowledged. And then as the, the solo progresses, you know, there's like moments where it's just like, play a hot lick. Yeah. Where it's like that halftime triplet feel 
against the double time. I think that's a really great, um, uh, like a rhythmic concept that I always want to jump into when I'm when I'm practicing uh, practicing this tune specifically. Um, so the album will be out hopefully for a sneaky pre-release. We're going to offer something by the end of the month that will allow you to to listen to the record only from my website and then it will drop to all mainstream media after that. So like when it comes to like, so that's like song building for me and I'm in the process of learning, you know, a ton of songs for ship rock. So there's like all the Andy Wood songs that I've got to play. And then there's all the tunes that I do that are ship rock tunes. And by that it's the stowaways event that's kind of like this rock star super group thing that they do on the cruise where they take different artists from every, um, all kinds of different walks of life and, and they put them on stage and they're all playing like, you know, chili peppers or Mr. Crowley or something like that. Um, so like the song list we've got, it's really killer. One of the things we're doing is this devil went down to Georgia, which has got, uh, I would play along with it, but I would get a copyright strike. Uh, it's got a, a, a sequence that I've stolen from the Mark O'Connor Devil, Devil Came Back to Georgia. I'm going to put, I'm going to put it at the end of it. So if we have, uh, if we have the normal melody, which is this, um, uh, here we go. Um, so it's like, So it's like that kind of melody. O'Connor does these triplets that are really sick. It's got that thing, but it's like double time. So it's like, if you're doing, if it's that tempo, it's got that. Uh, something like that. Let's turn on the metronome so we can get some pocket. So, so here it is. Right? It's like. Uh. Let's speed it up a little bit to get it closer to album tempo. Yeah, that's pretty close right there. Yeah. It's really tough to get that walk up. Yeah, there it is. And then there's a double shuffle part that's like. So like, let me kick that met metronome off so you can hear like this. Uh... So uh, put the metronome back on for it so you can hear. That. So the whole thing will be good. Uh, sorry. that but the record tempo is far quicker so it's a little bit closer to let's just play a couple of seconds of it let me see if i can find that tempo for the without getting struck so it wasn't too far off dun, dun. that's a little too fast dun, dun, dun. so it's it is it is right around around there so i don't I, I i don't have too far to go with the tempo practice right but i'm gonna put in those o'connor triplets Uh, and then this fiddle lick is really great. And then uh, 
Ah, this is this is the practice though. This is the chops. Two, three, four. That's it. Yeah. So that's it. Like triplets at like one thirty-six ish. So, uh, you know, it's really about me getting to where, you know, if I practice this, I've just sat down at the guitar. I haven't played much today. And um, if I'm going to sit down here at the guitar and I'm going to work through this, I'm going to sit here and hopefully by the end of the day, um, be cruising on all of these things that I'm going to practice today and then all come out really, really, really effortlessly. Right. So let's just try that again. You know, let's see if we can do it. Again, it's just like, this is how I'm gonna practice this stuff. So, bam, bam, one boy's run. So like a couple of laps through that will get me nice and loose. It's really about, it's really about the, um, like that kind of, and then get it to where I'm just super relaxed as I do it. Yeah. It's really quick, it's really, really fast, and it's gonna be uh, you know, a challenge to pull off live. So that, that's gotta go down on you know, February 5th, I think we're playing that. So now of course I could take the easy way out here, right, and just play the record version. But I think this O'Connor stuff is so sick. I think it's gotta be in there, it's just really too cool. Let's try it again. Let's just see what we got. Yeah. One more time. Oh, it's quick. Oh, it's quick. So, yeah, I mean, to me, it's like when I'm playing, when I'm playing the, uh, the the trying to practice this it's like not only am i trying to play you know the charlie daniels thing but i want to up it a lot a lot i want to up the the difficulty and this o'connor double shuffle section is just really really nasty and i i, I love it so much the thing we're not going to do is we're not going to put it into the key change where o'connor puts it up in e and truthfully it's a little bit easier to play out of e because the jump's not as big and you get a free B string. You can see I'm more consistent out of the key of E. Um, at the point of cleaning up your speed, do you already have the neck, the pick directions nailed down, finger position set for each note? Yeah, I mean, to me, it's just alternate pick. It's really about, the speed is about, am I really in the pocket? Really over here, I'm in the pocket. So it's about tightening up, tightening up this left hand sequence and the jump is awkward. And again, this is not written for guitar. It's written for fiddle. And on top of that, remember, Charlie's part is not, Charlie plays. So at this tempo, Charlie's doing like that. Uh. 
try to nail that last, get the bend not to be out of thing. And this last note. So it's really about taking this uh, play. It's like playing good time feel. Yeah, it's like playing good time feel. That's totally it. So as you can tell, you're getting a time feel. Like really, that's where my brain is focused more than anything else is just making sure that it's really in the pocket. Um, and then from there, you know, obviously I've got to do some jumps that are unnatural. Like that really sucks. For whatever reason, I just don't like the way that feels. Yeah. I could always legato it, but that seems like a weak way to do it. It's like you got to really kind of go all in, you know, with something like this. There it is. I'm really trying to drive that pocket home. And I'm not going to turn the metronome down too far. I'm going to try to keep it close to this tempo and, uh, you know, try to try to <laughs> polish the rough edges of the playing at this tempo. Yeah. So it's like now it's like trying to uh, really get warmed up today. And uh, there was some really cool arpeggios that Matteo Mancuso did that I stole um, from his interview with Rick. Uh, and it sounds that I actually was impressed that like he was doing things that I had, you know, I, you know, nobody really has this like original thought anymore. <laughs> right. Like I, I don't mean that to be literal. Like obviously people have original thoughts, but a lot of times when we think we're doing something that nobody else has done, we see somebody else doing it. We're like, well, I know they didn't get it from me, <laughs> you know? And uh, it was just interesting to see how he lays out these arpeggios. Um, those arpeggios. If you go back in time, to around 2006, 2008, maybe something like that. There's a video I did for guitar world magazine where I was teaching arpeggios and uh, I was in a metal band at the time. And I obviously had the big affliction shirt, bandana and chains and shit. It's just, you know, I was posered up and, uh, the video has me playing. It was, it was one that always bugged me because I felt like the playing good, but the tone was atrocious because they had some whatever, amp that I had to play through some practice amp and uh, anyways I teach those same shapes and it was basically just teaching pentatonic shapes pentatonic tap shapes so like let's take, take a minor so you can do it like that And um, you could take the right hand and just keep moving it up to scale, right? Now you can do it with the... And it's really hard with no um, fret. Let me put this on and I'll show you the difference that these things can make. Um, some guys are pro them. Some guys are all about them. Some guys are all against them. I'm really indifferent. I could care less one way or the other. You know, if I'm gonna do a lot of this stuff, I might put it on, um, just cause it cleans up the playing. It was just crazy how much it cleans it up. So I, now I don't have to worry about the muting. In the, in the left hand, I can just completely let the muting go. You can do all those kind of really crazy tapping licks that uh, that he does. One's really great where he comes up like that kind of thing. Uh, now one more time. Yeah, that kind of thing. You know, it's very similar to the tapping section I do in one of my new tunes on my new record. Um, it's in a tune called Free Range Chicken. And I'll show you those shapes real quick. So here's shape number two. Here's shape number three. So you can see it's just the pentatonic shape.
right? So it just moves it up. And then again. You could kind of take that thing and pull it all over the place. They get kind of fatiguing to me, so I'm always trying to work on being as relaxed as possible and not rushing that first finger. That's always a booger for me to make sure that that's really clean and not not rushed. Um, yeah, so, th you know, it was fun to watch Mateo on Rick's thing talk about chops and playing and, and another uh, really cool set of arpeggios he does. I think he does it in like E or D. Maybe here, maybe C major seven. Yeah, I think he does it there. Let's just put an A since we're playing everything out of A right now. Ah. Oh, sorry, that's something else I was working on. Oh. So let's take these arpeggios. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play like that kind of thing. And it works really well with his technique because he's got this finger style thing that's really cool. But I'm trying to, you know, assimilate things that are done on fingers over to the flat pick. And so I'm sweeping that. Uh, yeah, like that right there. That was one. So those are some cool ideas on how, you know, I, I take something that maybe I've picked up from just doom scrolling on the internet this week and uh, trying to sneak it in. Um, and also, you know, trying to keep things to be my flavor. That's another thing that I think is really important is like, I'm always trying to make sure that things sound like, sound like my brand and my flavor. And there's, there's not just this um, constant stream of notes without bends. Like I really love bending. <laughs> So I'm always thinking of uh, if I'm playing a lot of notes in a row. Trying to think of ways that I can add that sass in there. Like those little half step bends are really killer for it too. And you can see why I kind of don't like these things. They get they get caught up and get in my way a little bit. I tend to use a lot of the fretboard. I don't tend to just play up here. So these things are cool for the tapping thing, but they eliminate your open strings. So yeah, the next part of like practicing for me that I think about is like the memorization aspects. Um, let's um, let's change rigs here, uh, just for a second, and I'm gonna go into the axe effects because it has a um, it has a pitch block which I really like for um, changing the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Self-explanatory. Let's take a look at it. I, I'm, I'm tuned to standard. Let me turn that down. So when I kick the pitch block on, I can actually turn it down. Yeah. So let me turn the pitch block off. Which is really, really killer. 
It's really, really great. Um, so, um, one of the tunes that's going to happen on Ship Rock is this Nickelback Burn It to the Ground song. Um, and um, it's got so many little moments of riffs. So, I'm trying to remember riff A, riff, you know, which is the main, I'm, I'm taking it in like chunks, like main riff. And then a tag, and then, and then another tag. So my brain is trying to compartmentalize all of these things from riff A. And I'm, now I'm looking that, like that as like half of a lap. So let me clarify. When I'm practicing, especially like learning forms of tunes, I'm looking at things to be like laps around a track. That way I'm not thinking of every individual note by itself. I think that's something a lot of guys get hung up on is maybe they think of just individual notes or then they just think of like just individual blocks of frets. They're not thinking about the whole thing as, as, as it sounds. So like before the, the main song comes in. And then we're into riff two. So you can see how many fronts and backs there are to riff A. Riff two. Um, and then, you know, it's coming to the second one. And then we've now, what now we're at a point in the tune where it's like, there's guitar A playing the main riff, um, that, which is. Uh, so again, like this tune, um, I just started working on. And um, as you can tell, I don't really have it completely under my fingers because I know all the parts, the parts are easy to play, but I'm trying to memorize where they all go. Right. And so, uh, tunes like, like that, or like, um, what's another one we're doing for ship rock. We're doing Cowboys from hell, which I've never done before. Um, So I'm trying to think of all the different riffs that happen in this thing. Also, I've got to take an inventory of one certain stretch that um, that Dime does, which has got this this thing. And when I stand, my guitar is going to be too low. So I'm gonna, I've actually taken that one lick and mutated it to be something that I can play standing up, which is the you know a very a, a tapping version. Oh. It's a very atonal lick. When you play it slow, it sounds all wonky um, because Dime's like playing a shape. Here's another example of how he plays shapes and not necessarily notes. So let's take this shape. This is the solo. This is how it comes into the solo. And so when you hear that slow, it sounds extra wrong. But when you hear it fast, like he plays. It kind of starts mutating into the, you know, it comes after the. Into the rest of the solo. Um, and then after that is where I'm going to have to use that. And that's probably going to be something similar to what I play, where I just take a shape that I can play standing up, add a tapped note to the top of it, and descend that down to uh, end on the... And then I can get back into the, the things that are more natural. Um, 
I don't know if Dime had freakishly long hands or if he played a short scale or if he always put his leg up. I'm not, a, I mean, I didn't grow up with Pantera. So uh, blasphemy, I know, I just didn't grow up with that stuff. Um, so it's like for me, I'm always trying to find uh, a way that I can play it uh, with consistency, right? Playing consistently. Uh, you know, it's one thing to, to practice things to get it to where you can <laughs> play it and get, get one take of it out of a billion, you know, that's the other thing. It's that's the other thing kind of drives me bonkers is guys that can get one take of something. And then they say they can do it. It's like, you're not really, you're not really getting it. If you can only do it one time. Right. Does that make sense? It's like, you got to be able to do it consistently. Got to be able to do it standing up. Um, so as I practice my tunes, I'll be, um, practicing them standing up, <laughs> you know, as, as, as a big part of it. At the risk of maybe messing up, I could I could I could attempt to practice another another new tune from the new record, um, and uh, yeah, I mean why not? I think this will be fun. Um, this is the tune "Free Range Chicken." Um, this one's gonna have the guest solo. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I just play the guest solo. Yeah, I'll just do the guest solo, and uh, I, I may butcher this. Um, this is this is fresh. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get through this one or not, but we'll try it.
moderately close. Um, I'm gonna take that that solo with Brent in the middle. Uh, try to work on that a little bit, right? So it's like a. Um, You know, it's one of those moments where it's like I can't uh, get to a proper telly tone because that should be recorded with like a clean, um, you know, this kind of thing, right? But I can't get to it in time um, with all of the switching and then get back to the tapping section. So it's like just certain... Um, certain sacrifices have to be made. And that's another part of practicing that I always take into to concept here is that I'm um, thinking about, uh, you know, from a, from a live aspect, what else do I have to do besides play the guitar, right? I've got to change the pickups selector on it. I've got to uh, change the pedals uh, to get, you know, it's like, it, there's, a, there's a lot, there's a lot of information going on at the same time on this stuff. And when I think about practicing, you know, it's like, here, let me just show you something else that I do. It's like, this is for the song Closer. Um, let me get my OBS so I can see what I'm showing you. Um, yeah, this is for the song Closer. And it's a chart, but if you notice, it's not a number chart. That's because Clo Closer has, you know, pretty simple type of things going on in it. But it's got a, 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 a huge amount. It's like I've got punches of E, E, D, E, eight measures, guitar weird riff, eight measures, funk part talking, 16 measures, swirl part, four measures, outro, you know. And when I'm saying outro, I mean the... the uh, um you know, and so a song like Closer has a lot of stuff with it. Um, so anyways, you know, and, and the, the thing that's also interesting about practice is I'm starting to like try to get more comfortable with holding my practice out there publicly so people can see, you know, as I'm, as I'm struggling with things or as I'm learning things or as I'm working on things, it's like you can see that it's not just instantly downloaded. <laughs> it's not something that I think that's, God, that burns me up too, that so many people just post things and edit and edit and edit and edit. And then it just sounds inhuman. Well, at that point, it is inhuman, you know. Um, even, even you know, I, I loved hearing Mateo and Steve Morse and these guys when they go do the interviews with Ricks because it's just them playing. You can hear the, you can hear this type of stuff. You can hear the guitar living and breathing. And that stuff gets... Uh, neutered out and take it out to the point it doesn't even make sense you know oh yeah thanks bill it's a total dregs kind of thing right um it's 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 totally got that and it's got um a really fun And so I would I would just sit here and take another lap at that tune. Let me show you the head to the tune. And that's that is interesting because it flips upside down. see how like the, the it sounds like it's getting on top on like the upside down of the beat it's really really um really really challenging to keep that in the pocket uh especially at that tempo that that tempo's there and you know yeah randy's making fun of me he's like i'm just trying to warm up i am i'm just trying to get warmed up and get my day started here on some of these tunes and um you know it's 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 really really challenging um 
I'm getting something about ads will run shortly for some viewers. I don't know why YouTube just notifies me of stuff. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so um, let me hit some chat here. Let's do some questions. Let me bring my chair up to a non, non-playing non position. Ah, there we go. Um, and do some chat with you guys. <clears throat> yeah, the signal chain. Um, it's my main tour board. This is the board that was out with me. Um, this is the board that was out with me on the uh, Gary Lavox of, of Rascal Flats uh, solo tour. And it's got, it's got from left to right, not in, not in signal chain. This is not signal chain, but it's got a gearbox, an XTS equalizer, an Andy Timmons at pedal, an Andy Timmons uh, super mod, the GNI fuzz, a Wampler Pantheon, a Strymon Blue Sky, uh, Andy Wood Woodshed Compressor, uh, Strymon Mobius, and an Andy Timmons Halo with a gig rig. So obviously you can tell, um, obviously there's a lot of Andys on the board. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five pedals that are Andy pedals <laughs> between the three Timmons pedals and the two Andy Wood pedals. Um, you know, I don't really use the AT pedal that much. It's really not something, I, I, uh, so, sorry. I use the AT mod pedal a lot. Let me give you an example of what the board sounds like. Here's dry with no, no delay. That's got the woodshed compressor on. Let me turn that off. Here's what it sounds like without it. So that woodshed compressor is kind of like my, my magic button, if there was one. And then the AT mod uh, is like the same kind of thing. With a, a little bit of hair on it. So now when I add in some delay, it starts sounding really nice, you know. Crunch is the Pantheon, which is a little less volume because this is more like of a rhythm crunch. And now the lead tone is the gearbox. And everything is ran into the front of the um, the Sir SL68 that's right here. It's that half stack. Oh, this half stack right there. And the head, you can see the head right there. Boop. Yeah, you just can't really see it. Um, behind me in camera two is the Eric Johnson amp up top. And then the Bogner Shiva and a Diesel Herbert. So I'm actually getting a um, Fryat power station so I can have all my amps have effects loops, even the ones that don't have them. So yeah, um, you guys are asking about the magic button. Yeah, it's totally the magic button. It's the woodshed compressor and it sounds great. This is the crunch channel. Um, this is the crunch channel with the compressor. And I would use this for um, this tune, right? Like one that I do know that I play a lot, which would be like, I'd use it for this, right?
also, needless to say, that one doesn't really count as practice. That is playtime. I know that tune inside and out. I've played it live for years. It's a bit of a signature tune. So, you know, I always play it on a set and uh, I don't really have to try too often to remember um, versus those new tunes where it's like, God, there's all these sections and then I'm collapsing multiple guitar parts down into one on the first tune. There's uh, two parts at the same time, which is... We're going into this thing. And then it goes again. So like, while that's going on, I go, and I'm collapsing into this. And then so on and so forth. So um, that's another challenge. Junk Town, the album, just in general, was kind of written from the perspective of more trio-esque. And this new album is just layered to the damn moon. There's just stuff all over it, which is really, really great. Um, Sasha's saying he finds the cross-picking parts really hard. Yeah, I mean, they are. Like, uh, those kind of lines are kind of awkward. They can be a, they can be a mess. Um, Brent, thank you for the $5 uh, beer money. I appreciate that. Um, that will come in handy. We've got a... Uh, snow day yet again here in knoxville and uh, it's really locked the roads down so uh dustin's asking if it's the crunch channel amp no the amp's just loud and clean there's just something special about those marshall style amps um they have the higher plate voltage and you know 100 watts and, and big transformers so even just using them clean with pedals in front it's outstanding i really really love it um so yeah uh, D Hayes says too much editing makes it difficult to play live. I would add the word impossible. You know, it's like some of these things, even when they're played right live, they're not as tight as the album. You know, it's just not the same. Um, Bill Gibbons is saying, yeah, the dominant seven. Fa yeah, for sure. In free range chicken, there's definitely the dominant seven and it's like a sus. <laughs> Doug Aldrich lick that I love. Yeah. Noodling. 
Um, Steve is saying it's 95% of the time on board, which a comp is a big pedal in a small package. I think it's the, I mean, I think it's great. Uh, it's something we worked really hard on me and Kevin and, and it definitely is a secret, secret button. Um, Thomas says, Hey, recently saw Satch having a new amp design for the EVH Tony has in his head. Any other word you've heard? Yeah, I know the amp builder. Um, they have actually invited me down to try the amp. They've sent one out today, uh, to Satriani. And they know that I'm a big Van Halen fan and they wanted me to come down and check it out. I'm snowed in, but I want to, um, and I'm going to, uh, it, it's already out guitar world magazine. It's uh Delena with uh third, third power or th- three power, third power. And, uh, yeah, it's in, you know, they got one in Nashville and it's, it's, I can't wait to go down there and play it area eight, five, nine off topic to guitar, beautiful Corvette. You shared the other day next to the Porsche. What engine mods or is it stock? Amazing ride guitars, cars, love both. I do too. That is a brand new 2024 Z06. And uh, no, I'm not made of money. I'm not. I just, I'm financially irresponsible. (laughs) In all seriousness, um, you know, you guys have seen the band Skank Banger. It's really the reason I do the Skank Banger is just to afford the uh, little extra a little extra walking around money, as my granddad used to say, and that all goes towards fueling my guitar, or sorry, fueling my car um, drug. I love fast cars, and I love sports cars, and I love, it doesn't even have to be fast. Like, I just love cars. It was the thing that I had with my dad that we bonded over. My dad didn't play music, so we really bonded over cars, and um, loved to go to car shows together with him and my friends, and Man, they're just great, dude. I just love them. And um, I was able to get into the Z06 at MSRP, which is great because those cars are selling at 40 and 50, 40K over. You know, crazy talk. Crazy talk. Um, but, yeah, I got in it right. And, um, and yeah, we had a great time at, uh, at uh, Flat Rock. That's the new facility that's being built out there. Hundred million dollar facility. It's crazy town, man. It's really, really awesome. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah. Cheers, man. Thanks for checking it out. I, I'm. I want to start a page that's just for cars. Um, there's so many guys that are that are car guys in the industry. Neil Sean is a big car guy. Misha, Mansoor, and and Tosin Abasi are both big car guys. And we we chat occasionally. Send you know, car stuff to each other. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they'll, they'll come out here and ride this track out here in, in East Tennessee. Travis McCartney says a fast car can get away from you if you aren't careful, but a slow car flat out just makes me giggle. <laughs> I think there's, yeah, there's something to be had for both. I try to be, um, as, um, I try to be as, cautious as I can. I, I used to be way more reckless when I was younger out on the roads and I, I, I try to keep it on the track now if I can. I, I, I love it. Um, but also I'm not into just tearing things up. I also think it's not, you know, you don't drive on the street, you don't race on the street. I, I have a disdain for people that are out there, you know, racing on the street and, I, and that's not hypocritical. I, I, I did that. I did that in my early twenties. I was that guy, you know, we'd go out at night and do things we weren't supposed to do. Um, and luckily we never got caught, never got caught too bad. Um, but now it's like, it's a, you know, it's, it's way too dangerous. It's not worth it. Um, and I don't mean that like now in my life, I just mean now there's just so much more traffic. Um, Instagram culture kind of ruined a lot of that, um, because everybody started filming it, which may, once things are filmed, it makes people take bigger risk and it gets more dangerous. And I just don't, I don't think, um, the internet cell phone, age and the racing age needed to ever be together. Um, you know, obviously you go back in, in, in time to the, even in, even in the nineties, late nineties, early two thousands before cell phone culture was a thing. Um, and you could block off a, you know, a piece of old abandoned road back in the middle of nowhere, a couple of, couple of guys with radios and you could, you could drag race, you know, that, that, that's gone now. That just doesn't exist anymore. So, um, yeah, so have, uh, Ambient Shredder says, have you ever met Rick Beato? Rick is a good friend of mine. I, I love Rick. I think he's one of the outside of everything he does for the guitar community. He's incredibly nice. He's incredibly generous with his time. And all he wants to do is see people succeed. He wants to see people win. So Rick, love you. Love everything you do and, and everything that you're about, man. So he's a real inspiration and a, and a good friend. So 
<clears throat> Sasha R says it scares me when you say that you're struggling. Yeah, these tunes are new. I mean, you can tell there's warts in them. I'm trying to get them down. Um, and I'm also trying to increase the level of tenacity on things that are easy to me. Um, you know, the stock way to play double went down to Georgia is very easy to me. So I want to increase the, the visceral, uh, you know, effect of it, the visceral effect. I want to increase that by trying to throw in these Mark O'Connor things that are done with a legato longbow thing, you know, and uh, I'm trying to alternate pick it. So that's, that's becoming just really, you know, a challenge for me. And, 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 and I think that's where we all got to try to keep pushing ourselves is to the challenge and to the limits, you know. Um, little housekeeping here. Thanks for joining in. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, it helps. More importantly, if you love what we do and you love what we're about, Brent, thank you for the beer money. And you want to throw some beer money as a thank you into the, uh, into the machine and keep it going. Please go subscribe at patreon.com slash Andy Wood Music. I offer a ton of things over there. Uh, live streams, tablatures, transcriptions, you know, things like this. I'll actually be going live on Patreon this afternoon. Uh, that will be available to all members um, today's today's live stream on Patreon. And I'll just be practicing the Shiprock tunes so you can hear me struggle bust through them or murder them. It's, it's depending on how good I get them. I'll also be playing through all of the album, uh, the new album set list stuff for uh the Andy Wood set. So you guys are going to get to hear some, some new tunes if you go over there. So patreon.com Chuck has just put it into the chat. Um, we've got hats and t-shirts coming, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to be, uh, if you see me around Nam, you can grab a sticker. You'll be able to grab uh, Chuck. I'm going to say it. I know I'm not supposed to, but you'll be able to hook up with me. If you see me at Nam, if you see me at Nam, um, you, there is a way that I will allow you to hear the new record in its entirety from my website. So look for me if you're going to be at NAMM. And, um, you know, Chuck will be there as well. Make sure to say hi to us. We'll be going with my friend and steel guitar phenom, Travis Toy. And we're going to hang out. We're going to have, you know, dinner with some good friends, some industry folks. And we're going to go to the big Celestian party and just do all the things. So if you see me at NAMM, please say hi. I'd love to hang out. Um, the other side of the housekeeping is please go to andywoodmusic.com. All of the album stuff will be dropping over there and it's going to be fire. It's going to be so good. Um, it's, it, you know, please go to andywoodmusic.com for that. If you like the channel and you want to see it go on and you don't want to see it go away, you know, think about throwing some, some beer money at that Patreon. That's how we do things here and on Instagram and just keep everything going. Um, there's something about low cash in here. I just saw that word. Uh, Dwayne Colbert says, did you do any studio recording for the low cash songs? I did not. I was a hired gun for a year. I did a tour with them and helped those guys out. Love those guys. You know, they were great to me and we had a good time out on tour together. So everybody in that camp is Billy is great. And, uh, he's, he's playing guitar for them now. Um, but yeah, man, you know, every, everybody over there is really great. You know, Zach and everybody. So, um, of course, you know, Chris Preston, great guys. Um, so yeah, there's the two for that. Um, I am locking in folks for woodshed. I'm going to drop a bomb on you. We got a new one, a new announcement. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm not gonna tell you who we got. I'm going to tell you one. We got, I'm, I've got three guys that are coming to woodshed. Obviously, you know about Steve Morse. Um, we reached out to a good friend. Uh, I hope he becomes a good friend of mine, but I feel like he's a good friend of the guitar community. We reached out to Tomo and if you follow Tomo, he's going to be at Woodshed. I know you, who, you know, I'm talking about. He's always doing the funk strumming and stuff. He taught John Mayer. He's great. We're super, super excited to have Tomo. I think you pronounce his last name Fujita. I think it's, uh, F U J I T A. I think it's Tomo Fujita. I'm probably mispronouncing that wrong, but again, I'm from Tennessee, so whatever. That's my fault. Uh, but yeah, uh, pleased to have him this year. And I'll be announcing new players, new blood that are going to be coming to uh, Woodshed. And it's going to be really, really awesome. Um, yeah, so practice, man. Um, Fabian's uh, closing us out here with practice technique is one thing. But what are your thoughts on practice and motion, peace and love? Man, that's 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 it right there. Um, is uh, it, it, it's, it's as I practice i'm not going to be playing these songs sitting down so i'm going to be playing these tunes standing up so i'll probably be standing up and working through these things 
um, you know, doing that kind of thing. So uh, it, it, the emotion of it all comes from getting into a headspace mentally. You know, a little meditation before you start playing can go a long ways. I don't like just picking up the guitar and going. Like what you saw today, um, the reason I named this live stream practice was like um, I, I hadn't played yet. I haven't played guitar today. So what you saw today was me at my, my lowest skill gap today. And then as I play today, I want to um, increase this, the skill gap. I want to make that skill gap taller for my practice sessions today. And then that'll allow me to mentally get in a spot where I can not just be worried about knowing the tunes, but I can, I can really improve at my delivery of the tunes and really, really play some good stuff over them i wanted my goal is to be able to play free range chicken and um you know copperhead with the feel that i have on junk town like junk town i just feel like i'm just putting on a hoodie and going for a walk you know so i'm I, that's the kind of thing we're doing um sasha yes there is a discussion to be in germany very soon more on that as it develops um i see you with guthrie govin i see you i see you so yeah, if you have, if you, as always, if you have requests for members of the guitar community to be at Woodshed, please reach out to us. Let us know who you'd like to see. That's at Woodshed Guitar Experience. September seventh is the weekend this year, and uh, we're already over. We're already half sold out. Over half sold out. So if you're looking to come, there's only about fifty spots left. So make sure to get in there and get signed up. It's going to be amazing. We do a lot of really awesome giveaways. There's a lot of great manufacturers. It's a really, really strong, strong event with a lot of special people involved. So, yeah. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, be blessed. I hope you have a great, great afternoon. I hope you have some happy picking. And I hope this was a, a, a way to kind of get your head around practice and see that, you know, you know, even a professional like myself, you know, we struggle and there's warts on things until we polish them off. You know, it's like you've got to knock the rust off of it, become a better player. So like right now I'm, I'm pretty, you know, pretty down on my playing because I didn't play those new tunes as good as I wanted to. But uh, it's positive because I, you know, played Junk Town. And it's like, yeah, Junk Town felt good. So I know there's light at the end of the tunnel, right? So uh, with that said, yeah, be blessed, guys. Um, we, I see you about Barrett Jackson, Scott. Man, I, I wanted to go. I actually really wanted to go to Barrett Jackson next week. Um, I just couldn't make it work logistically. Um, yeah, dr dream dream car for me of all time is 1967 uh, Carroll Shelby GT500. That is uh, a total dream car for me. So if you see one of those, go ahead and pick it up for me and uh, put it on my tab. So, cheers, guys. <laughs>